everyone. My name is Emily, and this is Heart to Heart. This is a new segment I will be doing from time to time where I draw a piece that is a little bit more provocative, has a little bit more meaning, is a little bit more, you know, heavy in the subject matter, accompanied by a conversation topic that is a little bit more heavy or has a little bit more um, personal flair to it or is controversial, just something um, that's a little bit more serious because I feel like 90% of my channel is incredibly like goofy and wacky and oh, I was crying over there. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Super the bitch is crazy. I want this to be a little less edited than the rest of my videos because I don't know if you guys know this, but anytime I do a voiceover, I heavily edit and manipulate uh, my words because I don't know if you guys noticed, but kind of like Jeff Goldblum, I do a lot of um, uh, uh, um, um, and it's just kind of a thing that has always been a part of my character. I say um a lot, almost as um, an additive to my speech. I mean, it's an additive anyway, but like it just kind of adds to the texture of the way I speak. So in real life, I say um almost as a way of making the conversation flow a little bit better. It sounds kind of weird, but that's just kind of how I talk. I want this segment to be a little bit more real um, and a little bit more personal because I feel like um, you guys have sent me messages and things and sharing personal bits about yourself with me, so I think it's only fair that I share my personal opinions and feelings with you and kind of like a little symbiotic relationship there. We can kind of relate to one another in that way. I think it's super important to have someone that you can relate to, whether it be through the internet, whether it be in real life. Growing up, I felt very outcasted even by the friend group that I had and even when I extended my reach and kind of tried to fit in with other people I just never felt like there was a place for me and I think a lot of kids feel that way I don't think it was just me at all I don't think I'm the only one who felt different or like no one understood me I think that is a trait of growing up and being an adolescent and being in high school in particular yes there are cliques yes people branch off and and label themselves or put themselves in a box or other people put you in a box and that's really not fair but there's really not too much we can do about it. Humans as a species tend to pair off into subgroups and subcultures and things like that. And high school is basically just a little mini <laughs> version of society. So today's topic is going to be about high school depression and high school fitting in and just kind of being a kid in general, somewhere between a child and adult. And this topic was inspired by a message I received from someone kind of talking about a similar topic. And I thought it was a really great topic to start out with because I know a lot of you guys that follow me are young or teenagers or what have you. And yes, I know I have 20 somethings, 30 somethings, 40 somethings following me as well. And that's fantastic. But I know the majority of you guys are teenagers. And I want to start off with this comment right now. If you ever hear anyone, adult or otherwise, tell you, oh man, I would pay any amount of money to be a teenager again and be in high school and not worry about any responsibilities, well, fuck them. They're wrong. They are totally wrong. I don't know why they're saying that. I am going to give it to you guys. It, it's, it's so hard being a teenager because you have schoolwork, you have, um, you know, your own hormones to deal with. You have teachers. You have your peers that can be such assholes. And you may or may not also have a job. Being a teenager sucks sometimes. Really, really sucks. And I hate it when people try to invalidate being a teenager, be like, yeah, kid, I would pay any amount of money to be a teenager again. No, they wouldn't. And that's not to come here and say, your life sucks and blah, blah, blah. Some of you may have perfectly happy, wonderful teenage lives. That's fine. But I'm here to tell you that I am not one of the adults that think, I would give any amount of money to go back and be a teenager because I fucking wouldn't, especially being me as a teenager. That just was not fun. So your feelings are valid because people are dicks. There are always going to be bullies in this world. It doesn't matter how old you are. So I know that's not incredibly hopeful for those of you thinking you're going to escape these assholes in your adulthood. You kind of get to, like, it, you have a little bit more of a choice who you get to be around when you get older. As a kid in college, what have you, you are forced to be in classes with these people. You're forced to interact with these people. You're partnered with these people, what have you. 
it's a little uh, less free when you are this age. And yes, you could argue the point that at your work you're forced to be with people, or in your friend group if your really good friend is friends with someone you don't like, you're forced to be with these people. But overall, in general, you have more of a choice in adulthood than you do when you are a teenager. My biggest piece of advice, and it's advice I'm sure all of you have heard more than one time, is to realize that what is happening right now in your social group or your, you know, club or what have you, this isn't really going to matter 5, 10, 15 years from now. Yes, you are definitely going to make connections that very well could last the rest of your life, but the bad things that happen naturally you're going to pull away from and they're just not going to continue to exist after a certain point in time. The bully who told you that you're fat when you were in eighth grade is not going to be around you in five years time and it may not console you for the moment. It may console you in the thought that, okay, well, eventually I won't have to deal with this, but what am I going to do now? All you can do is stay away from negative things the best that you can. I'm trying to be realistic here and not give anyone advice that is unrealistic because I know emotions are real. Emotions cannot always be controlled. And when you're hurt and someone's constantly hurting you, the best you can do is try to get away the best you can. You know, surround yourself with people who are positive and loving and encouraging. Make friends like that. And the biggest thing I see in the kids that I work with and things like that, if your friends don't make you feel amazing, 100% of the time, if they don't make you feel content or comfortable with yourself, they are not your fucking friends. Do not surround yourself with people who are nice 90% of the time and then the other 10% treat you like you're a piece of shit or treat you like you're weird or treat you like you're a freak. Those people are not your friends. I don't care how long you've known this person. I don't care if they have so many friends. I don't care if everyone says they're the best person in the world. If they make you feel bad about yourself or anything that you have done, you cannot put that person in your life. And let me just clarify real quick that yes, friends and best friends have fights. That happens. You can sometimes butt heads and make each other feel kind of crappy. But if it's something that's unwarranted or happens frequently, that is an unhealthy relationship and it is not going to make your high school years any better. The people that should matter most are the people that make you feel like you matter the most to them. Those are the people that you want to surround yourself with, not just in high school. You want to surround yourself with those people for the rest of your life. I may not be able to give you guys the most promising or the most hopeful sounding advice on negative things that happen in your life, but I sure as hell can give you advice on how to flood your personal life with positivity. I am really fucking good at that. Well, that's my topic for today, guys. I tried to start out with something pretty simple and brief and kind of self-explanatory just to kind of get the ball rolling. Um, So about this piece here that I'm painting, it doesn't really have much to do with the topic at hand. I think in future videos, I am going to make sure that the topic directly relates to the piece. This piece is a play on the phrase to eat crow or eating crow or I ate crow, which is basically if you make a prediction or an assumption about something or someone and it happens not to be true or something different happens and you're kind of, you know, eating your words like, oh, I guess I shouldn't have spoke too soon. I'm eating crow. That's usually what the phrase eat crow means. And I perceived it very literally and then went ahead and drew this beautiful alternative girl with a little crow sticking out of her mouth. I thought that was kind of cute and fun. And it kind of could relate to this topic in the sense that sometimes people say things about other people that are either wrong or misleading and they can kind of eat their words later on. I guess and that's a fucking giant stretch, but you know, just give it to me. Just give it to me, please. If you guys have any suggestions or requests for future Art to Art videos, 
that is how I pronounce it in my head. Please let me know in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Don't forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys later.